Good morning, happy homeschoolers. Good morning, good morning. It is our first day of school over here and we are busy bees right now. I've got yeah. one kid doing piano lesson, one kid doing a drum lesson, one kid doing keyboarding. I did my very first um, piano, my very first piano song with the pedal. He learned his first piano song with the pedal and it's what? Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle. But after posting schedules and book lists on Facebook, um, when I realized you couldn't actually see it very well because it was dark when I took the pictures. And two, everyone wanted way more detail about the book list. So if you really, really want the book list, I can email you. Just drop a comment with your email in it and I will get it to you. I also have a baby over here on the floor who has not gone down for a morning nap. So despite my efforts of scheduling time for that, <laughs> she has a mind of her own and the brothers, yeah, no, they're busy. They need my help too. So let's say hi, Miss Addie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a much better view of my preschooler, pre-K kiddos schedule. I have breakfast, poems and gnomes, which is kind of specific to our family, but we start every day off with a poem from, oh, Addie, hang on with a poem from this book right here. And it just sits here, bookmarked to the correct day. It has very specific dates, so August 17th. Sing song seasons. Has its own poem. And the gnomes are weather, date, month, day of the week, little gnomes that are right there. And I've done that with all of my preschoolers. Then he does violin practice, drum practice, or drum lesson, depending upon the day. Then language arts, which is mostly letter identification, letter sounds, handwriting. Then chores, lunch, and reading. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do our foreign language, which is sign language in Spanish. On Thursdays, we also have co-op. That doesn't start for us until September. And we do Story of the World, which is our really in-depth history program. Okay, so then the schedule for my big boys, who are um, on paper in second and third grade, but are actually fourth. third and fourth grade schoolwork. They're just very straightforward. Math, social studies, piano and keyboarding. One goes and plays piano while the other does keyboarding, then they switch. Then science, language arts is an hour which includes handwriting, uh, literature, copy work, and um, a few other things. But then they do chores, lunch, reading dictation. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do sign language in Spanish and story of the world. And co-op on Fridays, they do spelling instead of keyboarding, which our spelling program is only 30 minutes a week. And it's all online. So, there you go. There's a better view of that. And then here's my book list. Google Sheets has become my new best friend. So, our book list has 77 books on it. Now, I understand that that sounds stupendously steep. And it is. So, we start with really easy. The boys don't necessarily know their reading level, per se. So, they're both taking totally different approaches to accomplishing. I'm in the five to six accomplishing this massive list okay so green is the easiest and then it gradually gets harder so as you can see down here Lux has done two of these harder books which is and their reading capabilities versus their comprehension capabilities are completely different so Rhodes's approach is to do all the easy, all the greens into the yellows into the reds. Lux started out doing these two hard ones and is now backtracking to the green to give himself a little mental health break, which is perfectly fine with me. But if you want the book list, I will email it to you if you drop a comment with your email. So we have some super easy ones like The Wind in the Willows, the Boxcar Children, Little Bear, Frog and Toad, Billy and Blaze. And then it gets more complicated. 
we are studying um, in Story of the World, which has disappeared. There it is, Story of the World. We are doing the first book this year, which is Ancient. So it's all ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, and ancient China. So half. Okay, guys, here is my overzealous book list. And I say overzealous because I have no intentions of my children in theory, reading all of them this year. But it's available. So it's ranging from, you know, X being super high, somewhere near the 12th grade reading level, and F being kindergarten, first grade, new reader. So as they complete it, I change the box to show that they've read it. Um, they both have totally different approaches to this. Lux started out reading these two, which are much closer to his actual reading level and were very challenging for him. And now he's going to give himself a mental health break and he's working through some of the green ones. Rhodes is doing all the green, then into all the yellow, then into the red. So, which is actually, it's really good for Rhodes because the red is far beyond him right now, but may might not be at the end of the school year. So, with that being said, my book list is about 50-50 quality children's literature, like Nancy Drew and Heidi. Um, what are some other classic ones? The Boxcar Children, The Wind in the Willows, um, Aesop's Fables, Banner in the Sky, things of that nature. And the other 50% are things that support our history lessons. So this year in history, we are doing Story of the World, and we are doing the first book, which covers the ancients. So it's ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, and ancient China. So the other part of our book list um, helps facilitate more thorough learning in that category, like the Hidden Army, Play Warriors, Greek Gods, Pompeii Buried Alive, Theseus, Hercules, these are just the books my children are reading to themselves or dictating out loud to me. These are not the books I am reading out loud to them. So some of them are very hardcore classics like Alice in Wonderland, The Bridge to Arabithia, The Jungle Book, Mary Poppins, so on. And some of them are completely geared towards what we're learning in history. For example, The Silk Route. It's the 7,000 mile journey of the ancient Silk Route in China. Um, what others? Where's the Great Wall? Cleopatra. Okay, so oh, who is Genghis Khan? So it, whether we get these all read or not is, you know, ultimately not, that's not the goal. Okay. <clears throat> I told them they had a complete year to try to do as many as they could, which means until the school starts again next year. So this is our summer reading list as well. We're just gonna to continue to dive into these particular subjects. And if at that time, you know, come June or so, if we haven't gotten to most of these or they're way too steep, no one's reading level has jumped that high, et cetera, et cetera, then I will add them to our read aloud list that I read at night. And that will become our summer read aloud list. And then next year, we'll be doing medieval. So all of our books will be 50-50 children's literature to medieval text, medieval history, biographies, so on. And there you go. So if you would like me to email you my book list, um, drop your email address in the comments and I will happily send it to you. I do not mind sharing it at all. So this took a very long time. Do not beat yourself up if it, yours is not looking like this. Um, I would not expect it to. So give yourself some grace, parents, as you delve into the unknown of homeschooling for the first time. But if you want the book list, I will happily email it to you. Drop your email in the comments and you can share. As well as I will also post photos in this video of the schedules for those of you wanting to study it a little deeper. Also, a few of you have asked about preschool. That seems to be a big hang up for everybody because there's distraction. Little kids are easily distracted 
and then they spend a good portion of time distracting older siblings that need to concentrate a little harder. So for us, Atlas does an exceptional job at arts and crafts and coloring and things of that nature. And he is working right alongside the brothers the whole time, constantly feeding him something new. You may also see in his schedule that I have an hour blocked off for Ivy Kids. Ivy Kids is a box subscription that I actually did not subscribe to. I was gifted three of them and he loves it. And so they are essentially set up like unit studies. And I will say that for my crowd, unit studies have worked beautifully for that pre-K, preschool age group. You can just do a little bit at a time. There's essentially seven or eight activities in these Ivy Kid boxes. Um, and it can be anything. So for example, the first box is about llamas. I kid you not, that is what it is about. It has a stuffed llama in it that he now carries around with him everywhere. It has a llama wind chime you can paint. It has a little llama statue you can color or paint. It has a llama board game. It has a book about llamas. And then to extend it, because I intend to do one per month, so to extend it, we'll watch a few videos about llamas. We'll get, we'll read Llama Llama books. We'll read, we'll talk about wool. We'll talk about alpaca fur. We'll you know, branch out just a smidge to the drive at home so that he learns something quality about the animal and it also substitutes as science. So it's definitely not language arts. It is in, is in, I'm using it more for science, arts and crafts and geography for our Atlas, but it's wonderful. Now they are pricey. They're I think $40 a box. So I will, probably do it again. Um, I got the first three for free, as I said, which will get us through until basically we're ready to break for Christmas or close. I'll have to pay for one for November or so. But um, at that point, I'll reevaluate and see if they're running any Christmas specials or Black Friday specials or Cyber Monday specials. There's ways to get discounts. And sometimes if you just order one box, they'll send you like a $10 off your next order or a free referral or something, you know. So I'm gonna order a box for November and see what I can finagle for the spring. But he loves it. And in our house, we start pre, um, we start kindergarten at age four because pre-K four and kindergarten are very similar beasts. The only difference is a slight more focus on reading. That's it. And AJ says that his goal for the school year is to learn to read. So we are going to start kindergarten in January, which is what I've done with all of them. And what that does is it gives us, I give them 18 months to complete kindergarten. So if they're able to do it, great. So if the boys don't need the full 18 months to complete kindergarten, then we're ahead. So ideally, see an Atlas probably will because of when he, his birthday is. But anyway, what has happened is that I now have a child that should be going into first grade, going into third, and a child that should be going into second, going into fourth. So now we're way ahead, which is good and bad. If you plan to send your kids back to public school post COVID, if that's even a thing, then I would not do that because you're gonna have a hard time placing them in the correct grade. But if you intend to keep, keep homeschooling and you're new to this, there you go. And it now stands as, if we get hung up somewhere, we have all this extra time that we can just put it away. You know, if we really sink at chemistry, or if we really just need to spend a whole semester learning how to write and structure a paper, we can, and we cannot accomplish anything else. And that's okay, because we have this big time buffer. I hope you all are feeling more prepared. Most of you have spent the summer learning a lot. So remember to give yourself grace, lots of grace. There will be bad days. Some days it's okay if the grocery store is school. It's okay if making muffins is school. They are going to learn. And that is the hardest thing to admit to yourself because of the fear of them not learning from you, but they will. They will ultimately learn the things they need to know to function as an adult. So Take deep breaths and get started. Good luck, everybody.